right. So next we're going to cover a very important piece of equipment in a linear accelerator. You may see a diagram, something similar to this. Be asked, what is this device? When do you need it? And describe how it works. So to describe a Claystron is extremely important. One that you often see in ABR part three pretty much practice examples. And it is a common question I've been told that is asked. So it's important that you know the details about this certain device. So to begin, let's talk about what you need to know to accurately answer this question. You have to know what the cathode does. You have to know the bunter cavity. You have to know the drift tube. You have to know the catcher cavity and you need to know the collector. If you know what those things do in relation to each other and how they work, I think you will have prepared and set yourself up to do well in a similar question like this. So to begin the cathode, like most cathodes, these release electrons and that goes, those go into the bunger cavity. As you can see, it's all connected here. Thankfully, this does make logical sense as we move down the klystron from the cathode down to the collector. So it's somewhat intuitive, but cathodes release electrons, they go into the bunter cavities. So now the bunter cavities, now these are energized by low power microwaves. And what this does is set up alternating electric fields across the gap right here between these gaps. Now, the electric field varies in time and only the negative electric field accelerates. And I want to discuss this point a little further. There is something called velocity modulation. This is a big word that is very important for you to know. It's kind of a key word, something the examiners may be looking for. And what this means is that the electrons, so we have, let's just say we have a electric field here, and we have electrons coming in. So the electrons that arrive early in the field, let's say they are somewhere right here. So they are going to encounter a retarding electric field and they are going to be slowed. Whereas if they show up about right here, they're going to be accelerated. So some of the electrons from the cathode are accelerated some of them are slowed, and that is what we call velocity modulation. That happens here in the bunter cavity, and that is going to cause electrons to bunch together, right? So only the negative electric field accelerates these electrons. So two negative charges are going to push each other, accelerate the electrons, and when all this happens, some are slowed, some aren't bothered at all, and other ones are accelerated, that is going to take all these electrons that are being put into this electric field, they are going to bunch them together, hence the buncher cavity. So now here, this says drift space, you need to be prepared that some diagrams are going to call things slightly different, but I've always been learned that this is called a drift tube. So this connects the buncher and the catcher cavities, and it sends electrons to the catcher cavities and is resonant at the arrival frequency of the bunches or the arrival frequency. So now as the electrons, which are right here, they have now moved down the drift tube, they are going to enter the catcher cavity. Now those have a retarding electric field that is very intense in the second cavity here and made from the kinetic energy of the electron motion. This is the microwave power that energizes the accelerator structure. So you see the microwave output that is going to come out and go into your accelerator tube that is going to accelerate those electrons for your clinical beam. But the catcher cavity has that retarding electric field that very much slows the electrons that are coming in down. That residual energy is taken and pushed out as electrons and microwave power into um, 
the accelerator structure, and then the rest of that, the residual energy is dissipated in heat, which uh, can, you know, is important. There's a lot of extra energy that's dissipated as heat. So now high energy electrons kind of going back to when you need this here. When you have a high energy electron, that is when you are high energy linac, that is when you need klystrons. Now, I would say anything that is above 6x. So if you have a 10x and 18x, you need a klystron. If you're dealing with 6x, maybe if you only have 6 and 10x, you could probably use uh, something else, which we will cover later. But for this, we want to use a klystron. Also important to remember that high energy linux have three or five cavities. Somewhere in between there, the more cavities you have, the more amplification you have and the increased amount of bunching. Also, a random stat to know is that we are dealing with five megawatts of output power here for the microwave. So that is klystron. I mean, I think for this, you need to know magnetron and klystrons as much as you can possibly know. In case you get asked, there's a lot of pieces and there is some very involved physics that goes on in between there. This is a rough guide to kind of get you started, to get you to understand what the different pieces are and then how to dive further. So if you have questions, comment below. Happy studying and best of luck.